Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi, my name is Sarai Humaira, and wait, wait, who did this sound? This video is gonna be like a comedic video, but this video actually for educational purpose. Wait, wait, let me change it for you. Ah, it's better. Okay, can we reverse? My name is Sarai Humaira, I'm from group 4, and today we will discuss about the cohesion and the coherence of the Jakarta Post newspaper written by Prayuda at Ahmad Dahlan University, Yogyakarta, in September 2016. Are you ever heard about this newspaper? Hmm, if I'm not learning about this discourse analysis, I will not know there the existence of this newspaper. This article try to explore about cohesion and coherence in the editorials published in the Jakarta Post, one of the leading English language newspaper in Indonesia. So Prayuda used an observing method to get uh, data from 28 editorials and identify method to analyze the data. For more explanation about cohesion and coherence will be delivered by my friends over here. And I will play those videos for you. But don't worry, you will not see me until the last video because this video is continue automatically to the next video and without any further ado, stop smiling smiling. This video about to go down. I just bore you word, Nessie. Sorry. <laughs> in the editorials of the Jakarta Post. Muliana 2005 uh, asserts that a good and solid uh, discourse occurs from a cohesive sentence. Discourse is divided into oral discourse and written discourse. Written discourse like a newspaper is very familiar today. One of uh, the well-known newspapers in Indonesia is the Jakarta Post. Uh, the most important uh, article in a newspaper is the editorial. Therefore, our group uh, intends to uh, find tools for editorial cohesion and coherence at the Jakarta Post. Cohesion uh, refers to various linguistic means. Uh, they are grammatical cohesion and lexical cohesion, by which sentences uh, stick together and are linked into large units of uh, paragraph or sentences and or chapters. So, now I will tell you about grammatical cohesion. Grammatical cohesion have uh, elements are very important in writing essay in order to make sentences related to uh, each other. It concludes uh, that the one element uh, presuppose uh, the other. The elements cannot be effectively conduct uh, expect by recourse to it. The elements of grammatical cohesion according to Holiday and Hassan, uh, 1976, such as uh, references, uh, substitutions, ellipses, and conjunctions. Okay, I think so. Thanks for your attention. Hi everybody, my name is Tutwari Handayani. And today I would like to explain about Reference and substitution. Reference is the specific nature of the information that is signaled for retrieval. Based on the place of reference, the interpretation of reference can be divided into two parts that is, exoporic and endoporic. Endoporic is textual and exoporic is situational. This is based on Halliday and Hassan. When the interpretation of a reference lies within the boundaries of a text, it is called endoporic relation. Endoporic relation can be divided into two parts, that is anapora and katapora. 
Anapora is the presupposition of something that has gone before. While katapora refers to the presupposition in the opposite direction with the presupposed element following. Both anapora and katapora reference use personal reference or pronominal reference, demonstrative reference, and comparative reference. In the editorial of Jakarta Post May 2011, the personal reference that found are personal pronouns and possessive determiner such as it, we, and our. Demonstrative is referenced by means of location on a scale of proximity. In the editorials of the Jakarta Post May 2011, the demonstrative reference found are the these, those, here, and there. Now, comparative reference. Comparative reference is indirect reference by means of identity of similarity. Comparative reference found in the editorials of Jakarta Post May 2011 are equal, similar, other, more, less, and s. Now, we move to substitution. Substitution is a relation between linguistic items such as words or phrases or in the other word it is a relation on the lexical grammatical level the level of grammar and vocabulary or linguistic form it is also usually a relation in the wording rather than meaning holiday and hasan divided the three types of substitution namely nominal verbal and clausal Part 1. Nominal Nominal substitution found in the editorials of Jakarta Post uh, May 2011 is word 1. The nominal substitution 1 functions as the head of nominal group. The second is the verbal substitution. The verbal substitution in English is word do. This operates as the head of a verbal group in the place that is occupied by the lexical verb. In the Jakarta Post, May 2011, there is a verbal substitution do which substitutes the sentence quick to jump to the defense of their two fellow politicians. The words used as clausal substitution are not. There are three environments in which clausal substitution take place. The first is report, the second is condition, and the third is modality. In the Jakarta Post editorials May 2011, the word not which substitute sentence much of the anger has not been vented at Yudhoyono. Not is a substitution of conditional clauses. It is concluded that the clausal substitution occurs on the entire clause and the presuppose is a clause. Thank you! Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Tiana Ika Wahyuni. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about ellipses and conjunction in the discourse entitled The Cohesion and Coherence of the Editorial on the Jakarta Post. Holiday and Hassan, 1976, say that ellipses can be regarded as substitution by zero. It is divided into three kinds, namely nominal ellipses, verbal ellipses, and clausal ellipses. Nominal ellipses mean the ellipses within the nominal group or the common noun that may be omitted or delayed and the function of head taken on by one of other elements. Nominal ellipses found in the editorial of the Jakarta Post May 2011 edition are those, some, the other, most, and largest. Verbal ellipses consist of two types that are lexical and operator ellipses. Uh, lexical ellipses is the type of ellipses in which the lexical verb is missing from the verbal group. All the modal operators can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, must uh, are alike in that one of them can function as a lexical verb. In the tutorial of the Jakarta Post, May 2011 edition, 
the word can and will are lexical ellipses. They are the type of ellipses in which the lexical verb is missing from the verbal group. The word accepted is an operator like ellipsis because it involves only the emotion, uh, omission of operators. All the verbal ellipses are anaphoric because their presupposition are the preceding sentence. Next is conjunction. According to Halliday, in an introduction to functional grammar, 1985, conjunction is classified into elaboration, extension, and enhancement. First, I'm going talking about elaboration. Uh, there are some elaboration in the editorial of the Jakarta Post, May 2011 edition. The word that is in is a, a position that is expository, and for example, is an exemplification. While uh, the word rather is a kind of clarification, which is corrective and in particular is the same, but the word is particularizing. Next. Uh, is extension. Uh, extensions involve addition, adversative, and variation. There are some extensions in the editorial of the Jakarta Post, May 2011 edition. The conjunction nor is an addition because the word presuppose additional item, but is a conjunction which relates to contrast sentence, so the word is adversative. And the word except is a variation, extension, conjunction. The last is enhancement. Enhancements involve special temporal, manner, partial, conditional, and matter. There are some enhancements in the editorial of the Jakarta Post, May 2011 edition. That is the word soon. Soon is special temporal because it is being used. Uh, being used as a text creating cohesive devices in terms of metaphorical spaces and therefore and yet are causal conditional because they expand and qualify clauses or sentence with a circumstantial feature or condition thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh hi everyone my name is Yunisa Zahra I will explain about lexical cohesion. Halliday and Hazan in 1976 stated that there are two types of lexical cohesion. The first is about reiteration and the second is about collocation. Reiteration is also categorized into three types. The first is repetition, the second is synonymy or near synonymy, and the third is superordinate and general word. The repetition in the Jakarta Post are hostage and peace that are mentioned in many times in the sentence on the text of Jakarta Post. There are also some synonyms and near synonyms that are mentioned in the Jakarta Post that are the word of graph that is refers back to corruption and the next is the word of Firms that refers back to a company, and the last is the word of disappearance that is refers back to the missing. The next is about superordinate. In the Jakarta Post, there are some of superordinate, like criminalization, that is superordinate of prebury, and the next is about the words of trucks that is superordinate of vehicles. Make you easier to understand about superordinate. Just remember that superordinate always refers back to the upper class, which are more general. The second is about collocation. It has three restrictions that are based on the meaning or the item, based on the range, and based on the strictest sense. The instance of collocation in the Jakarta Post are injuries and violence. Both of them are strongly connected to each other as a collocation based on the meaning. Remember that the collocation, I mean the chains of collocation are like the investor, exporter, and importer. I think that's all about the lexical cohesion. Thank you very much for your kind attention. See you next time. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi guys, my name is Sulrifa Mahmuda. 
So, I will explain my part is about coherence in the editorial of Jakarta Post. So, what is coherence? Coherence is the grammatical and semantic interconnectedness between sentences that form a text. Coherence is the extensiveness of a relationship between one part and another part of a sentence. So, the sentence has a complete meaning and make it easier for the reader to understand and also we can say that the sentence doesn't have an ambiguous meaning. Sinclair, Hoy, and Fox in 1993 said that a text can be said to be coherent if uh, when each successive sentences uh, can be assigned wholly and without difficulty to one of the relationship. According to Penjik in 1997, coherence is how the meaning of sentences in a discourse uh, hung together. So, coherence has the function of connecting various ideas in a discourse. So, Penjik concludes that if something is coherent, everything uh, links together very well. Besides that, he also distinguished coherence in a micro and macro level analysis. In micro level analysis, coherence occurs from the structure of a discourse, while in a macro analysis, coherence develops into topics and themes or of discourse. In 1987, the Angelo asserted that there are some techniques to achieve coherence in a paragraph. They are repetitions, transitions, and pronoun reference. First is repetition. So, what is repetition? Repetition is the word that are repeated in the text. So, for example, there are some repetition in the editorials of the Jakarta Post, uh, May 2011 edition. As you can see here, this is the example of repetition in the uh, editorial of Jakarta Post uh, 2011 editions. You may read this sentence carefully and you may find that the word of hostage repeated in several times in these sentences. So, repetitions of hostess, hostage in the example try to create the wholeness of the discourse. Uh, the word of hostage in topic sentences show that the discourse is talking about hostage and the following sentences use the key the keyword to linkage the message that the discourse is talking about i think that's all guys my presentation thank you I'd like to continue the next to continue the next material about transition words and pronoun reference so uh, transition words and phrases or also called linking words uh, or connecting words are used to link together the different ideas from the text they help the reader to follow the arguments by showing uh, the relationship between different sentences or part in a sentence transition words can be written or oral context for the example narrative and debate uh, so there are some varieties of uh, transition words uh, like the first one is starting for the example first of all uh, first at first initially and to begin with uh, the second one is continuing for the example then eventually soon and later on the third is ending for the example to summarize um, finally in short and last the fourth is uh, showing cause and effect for the example accordingly as a result therefore and consequently and the last is giving example for example in addition for instance uh, such as and for example the next material is about pronoun reference pronoun reference is the practice of making pronouns refer clearly to the words they replace uh, pronoun uh, takes the place of a noun 
Thus, the pronoun must agree with noun it replies in number and person. Also, it must be clear which noun uh, the pronoun is uh, substituting for. Pronoun in coherence is the same uh, with the explanation of it in reference uh, as the part of grammatical cohesion uh, for the example this newspaper carried a touching reaction of Indomaret employees after being informed of the closure of the shop where they work in West Java so the use of the pronoun they is to hang the meaning uh, of the one sentence to uh, the other in the discourse by the pronoun the reader will uh, understand that every sentence in the discourse is a building of an understanding uh, the description uh, concludes the uh, pronouns is a way to achieve coherence in of a discourse uh, that's all from me uh, thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh hi my name is shamsidar i am from group four so now I will conclude about our material today that is about cohesion and coherence aspect of the editorials of the Jakarta Post May 2011 edition. This paper has examined the cohesion and coherence aspect of the editorials of the Jakarta Post May 2011 edition from the discussion, the cohesion of the editorials of the Jakarta Post May 2011 editions consists of grammatical and lexical cohesion. Yeah, the grammatical cohesion involves reference that is personal, demonstrative, and comparative, substitution that is nominal, verbal, and causal, ellipsis, nominal, verbal, and clausal, and the last one is conjunction, that is elaborative, extension, and enhancement. While the lexical cohesion involves reiteration that consists repetition, synonym, or near synonym, subordinate, and general word, and collocation. While the coherence of the editorials of the Jakarta Post May 2011 edition consists of repetition, transition, and pronoun reference. So, cohesion and coherence are closely related and support each other. So, cohesion refers to the linkage of forms, while coherence uh, refers to linkage of meaning. So, the fundamental difference between them is that cohesion is syntactical aspect and coherence is semantically aspect. Uh, the result of the study of cohesion and coherence of the editorials in the Jakarta Post May 2011 edition provide practical and theoretical information about discourse analysis. So practically, the research explained about cohesion and coherence devices that are very essential in writing a process. Theoretically, research of this course is still very rare, so it is caused by many reasons. The paper at least can be used as a map in understanding uh, the dimension and limitation study of this course. Yay! Those were the video for my friends. I hope this video can be useful for all of us. And we're sorry if there is any lags or maybe the wrong words on the sentences. And once again, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye!